when we constantly surround ourselves with external stimuli, when we constantly watch television programs which require our attention, when we constantly read books that require our attention, when we constantly listen to music which requires our attention, when we constantly surround ourselves with people and talk with people, that requires our attention. Therefore, when we're constantly stimulated by external stimuli, the stimulus of external circumstances and, and things of that nature, when we're constantly stimulated by these things, we can never just sit in the silence, go inward, and observe the mind. This is known as meditation. And meditation is how we access our own internal records. It's how we access the power of our mind. So we're, we, we live in a reality of stimulation. Everywhere you go, there's stimulation in this matrix. Whether you're drive, when you drive, it requires all of your attention. Otherwise, you risk fucking crashing into something and dying, etc. When you walk down the street, there's all sorts of shit going on. There's cars driving by. There's noises. There's telephone poles that visualize your st that stimulate your visualization. There's people walking by. There's dogs barking, etc. People out here in the matrix never get five fucking minutes alone, let, an let alone a fucking hour or two. So you know, you if you look at different parts of the world where the kundalini is more stimulated and people are experiencing kundalini to a higher degree, these are places where they're isn't so much stimulation. These are places where people can sit in a fucking ashram or alone for six hours and meditate and literally just go inward and fucking travel the internal mental realm of silence, etc. So, you know, living in the United States as someone who has experienced Kundalini, living in the United States as someone who has experienced Merkaba mysticism and seen what it's like to be within the aura, etc. You know, it's just, once you experience these states of consciousness, you start using more brain power, and once you start using more brain power, you begin to realize how we're living on a prison planet. At least this part of the world here in the United States of the Matrix, in the land of the dead. And it's not just financial imprisonment. This is imprisonment of the mind. You're constantly surrounded or in, in an, yeah, you're constantly surrounded in, in, in living in an environment that constantly stimulates your attention and your attentive faculties. So there's never any silence. There's always stimulation, whether that be the sound of cars in the distance, the fucking phone ringing, the goddamn bills, uh, you know, your your television bills, your phone bills, this, that, and the other. There's constantly something. So, you know, again, the, where the Kundalini is most active on the planet, these are places where people aren't in this fucking matrix grid to the extent that we are here in the United States of the matrix. So, you know, it's to the point now where here in the United States, to have a Kundalini awakening, it's often through the use of psychedelics and extensive yoga practices because literally we don't meditate here in the, in the matrix. We never go inward. We never experience, we never travel into the dimensions of the mind through silence in observing the breath, etc. And therefore, we never really have a chance to create organic Kundalini awakenings predicated upon med meditation and ab the absorption of prana and the deep breathing and the lowering of the heart rate through meditation. So, you know, to experience a Kundalini awakening out here in the West with all the stimulation, it's often required, some cataclysm has to happen, such as some intense drug trip, you know, a psychedelic experience to 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 literally the site well, how the psychedelic works is it it allows you to escape your normal framework of thinking and through that you can manifest a a reaction that leads to a spontaneous awakening of the kundalini but the dangerous part of a spontaneous kundalini awakening a forced kundalini awakening excuse me through the use of psychedelics is it often 
is a premature awakening and the rational mind living here in a, in a matrix like this, the, excuse me, the mind of an individual living in a matrix like this has a difficulty rationalizing the Kundalini experience after the uh, experience has worn off, after the serpent energy has subsided. Because let me tell you, the average human here in the Western world does not have the type of body that is resilient enough to harbor the fire of Kundalini 24-7, 365. And therefore, most individuals out here in the Western world, when they have Kundalini awakenings, they're spontaneous and they're short-lived. Although they are very real and they are very, very vivid and they are very, very life-changing, miraculous and mystical, etc., they are short-lived. So... And again, Kundalini is a very real thing. Many people, you know, in this new age, many people in the alternative health realm that aren't privy to Kundalini, they automatically regard it as being some fake fucking thing because they've never experienced it. See, that's another problem here in the Western world. Through the public school system, we have put ourselves in a box where if we th haven't experienced something, many of us regard it as being, oh, I can't be true, bro. Can't be true. Fucking, I can't see ETs, therefore they're not real, bro. You know, what is serpent energy, bro? What, what are you, fucking high on something, dude? That's not real. Kundalini. Oh, oh. To regard something as not true because you haven't experienced it, that is very, very foolish. And let me tell you, many of the people who haven't experienced mysticism, etc., the higher realms, the Merkaba, they've set themselves up to not experience it. So many of you people complaining, oh, if aliens aren't real, why, if, or excuse me, if aliens are real, why don't they come and visit me? Oh, oh. Many of you have put yourself in a box, a framework of thinking that actually contradicts you from being able to manifest that type of experience. So you have been put in a box. <laughs> the mind has been enslaved heavily. And I go into this in detail in my um, book that I'm putting out. I'm putting it, I was going to put out a full length book, hard copy, all this. I've decided to make it available to more people by putting it into an e format and breaking the big book up into multiple small books that I can sell, you know, 30 to 40 pages each. Many people, 10% of the people who buy books, excuse me, I believe the statistic was only 10% of the people who buy books, I can't, I'm not, I can't remember the statistic, so I'm not going to say it, but a majority of the people who buy books don't even fucking read past the first, first chapter. So, you know, it's, it's easier for your average person, especially due to the fact that many people have full-time jobs out here in the matrix. They're busy. It's much easier for the average person to read a 30 to 40 page book instead of some like monumental volume of like 300 pages with all this different information, etc. Many people don't read books. I've looked at the statistics. I've looked at the anal, uh, analyzations and the research on why people don't read books once they get them. Many people are all excited to buy books. Oh, I'm going to read this book. I'm going to read this, but then they get it and they don't get past the first chapter. And that's due to the intimidating nature of a thick fucking book. So I'm going to make the eBooks available. And in the future, I'll make a hard copy available for those who are interested in more of like a collector's item, a uh, limited edition of hard copies. Maybe these books will do good. I hope so. You know, it'd be nice to make some fucking money out here in this matrix through my own, uh, uh, you know, what I'm saying is it'd be nice to succeed financially through my own abilities. So, you know, I'm, people have said, oh, bro, you're going to charge for all this. What are you selling out? I'm sorry. I can't afford to make all this information and, and spend all my time just to give it out freely. I wish to, I wish I lived in a world where resources weren't a requirement. I wish I had all this free time, but things cost money and I'm sorry. I want to eat. I'm sorry. I want, I would like to buy some fucking little uh, organic melons here and there and etc. So it's funny. People will happily spend like $60 on a video game or $400 on a whatever new fucking video game console comes out, you know, but they, they, well, they want to bicker at me because I'm, I'm going to sell a $6 fucking ebook. Get out of here, man. See the minds of people have been aber, the, the ab ugh. 
We have lost our minds here in the United States. And statistics will prove that. Remember, in night what was the, uh, I, I have so many statistics. I've said them in my previous videos. Un unfortunately, I can't remember the statistic. But I believe it was in 1976 that the U.S. Public Health Department said that only 1.5% of all Americans are actually healthy. Again, in 1976, the U U.S. Public Health Department said in in that only 1.5% of all Americans were actually healthy. And now we're in 2015 with even more unhealth. That means that like 0, 0, 0.0000000000001% of the United States is actually healthy. And the health of an organism is directly connected to the health of the mind and the consciousness which directs and operates that organism. So to think people are healthy out here in the unnatural world of the matrix in the United States, the land of the dead, you'd have to be crazy. You'd have to be absolutely fucking cuckoo to think that this is an epicenter of health. Remember, we spend m more money on healthcare than any other nation, yet we're the sickest nation on the planet. But bro, United States, bro, we got all the technology, we got all the medicine, bro. But we're the most sick nation on the planet. We're the most obese nation on the planet. We harbor the most suicides on the planet. We harbor the most crime on the planet. We harbor the most mental illness, most me uh, highest mental pathology rate on the planet. But we're fucking the, the most advanced civil uh, nation. Come on, people. When, when did you lose your mind? People have lost their fucking mind. And let me tell you, it's because of all the tap water. It's because of all the dairy. It's because of all of the GMO. It's because of all of the myriad of toxic medications. It's because of all the television programming in your public school system put in the box uh, programming. From a young age, you were put into a box and you were taught how to think. And you were taught how to think in a very limiting manner. You were taught how to think in a way that actually limits you. It limits your mind. And when you limit your mind, you limit everything. We're supposed to be unlimited beings. And let me tell you, there are things that we can do once we transcend our limitations and get back into a Christ consciousness mental or state of mind with the Kundalini activated. There are things that we can do with this organism that would blow your mind. I'm talking about some really neat shit here, and I've discussed it in previous videos. The Sidhis, the superhuman abilities that are attained through the activation of the Kundalini Uraeus. Kundalini is responsible for activating all of the dormant regions of the body that have put been deactivated through this matrix that we live in. So let me tell you, the architects of this matrix... They're terrified of the Kundalini. The Kundalini is a war weapon. The Kundalini is a <laughs> very frightening thing to the parasitic elite that are controlling he things here in the land of the dead on the physical dimension through all the magic and sorcery that they, they use to keep this planet enslaved, all the chemtrailing, all the GMO, the pollution of the tap water, all the garbage and the nanotechnology, etc. Kundalini. When Kundalini is activated in a human being... And it liberates all the tissues and it gets all the blood enlightened and things start flowing through you quickly. When the Kundalini activates the bone structure and enlightens the bone marrow, when it enlightens the bone, when it enlightens your tissues and your veins start being pumped full of electricity and all your neurons start firing in unison with the serpent energy. And once that serpent energy gets into your brain, cracks open your pineal gland and starts neutrifying your calcified pineal gland. And as it en enlarges, pushes all the calcifications off the pineal gland so that it can go and get filtered through the blood and get shit and pissed out of your system. When the Kundalini activates and you realize who you are, when it allows you to transcend into the ancestral realm of consciousness, when you can get into the higher Godhead and experience the Merkaba, once the Kundalini cleanses the system and opens up the channels, the meridians, etc. When the chakras become activated and you start pumping in that planetary energy, when you start getting 
the, the kundalini energy coming in through your feet from the center of the earth and you begin to get bridged with the absolute and you start pumping in all the energy from the planetary spheres that operate your chakras, etc. When all this shit happens and you realize who you really are, you are an infinite being who is mighty or uh, heavily, heavily dangerous to the continuity of the parasitic elite out here in this matrix. And let me tell you, with kundalini, you can become so strong that you can do things... Whew, man, and it may, it may sound crazy to the average person who comes across this video and, and, and hears this, but let me tell you, with Kundalini activated, with the serpent energy activated, I mean, you, you become completely activated. The kund Remember, you use a fraction of your brain power right now, and that's why you're in a state of limitation. When Kundalini comes along, it activates all those dormant regions that have been shut off, and once those dormant regions become neutrified and nourished and activated, that's when you realize who you are. That's when you can see the spirits around you that are constantly watching you. That's when you can communicate with the ancestors. That's when you, you, you become so powerful with your aura activated. And remember, the aura is not just some invisible fog like all these metaphysician liars out here try to make it out to be. The aura is a geometrically perfect, very visible thing to the eyes once the etheric bodies are cleansed, once the astral bodies are activated, once the Godhead is activated, when the pineal gland becomes activated, you can now see into the darkness of the ether. And when that happens, you can see your aura. You can see the Merkaba. You can communicate and look at your chakras. You can see the massive balls of energy that are in front of your hand and behind your hand that move as... Whew, Hmm. I'm going to shut this video off. I'm getting a little too passionate. There are things I want to say that I'm not going to say. Look out for my current, my upcoming books if you're interested in hearing me rant more about the parasitic elite and the different mind control and the ways to stimulate the kundalini and the importance of grounding, eating fucking fresh fruits and vegetables, growing your own food, etc. Homework. If you're interested, if these videos have stimulated you, a little homework would be get on a bicycle or go walk around your neighborhood and find some fruit trees and start eating from the Garden of Eden. Fruit is Food is supposed to be free. The system has ingrained into your mentality that everything costs money. Remember, in the Garden of Eden, everything was free. Everything is supposed to be free here in the Garden of Eden. And let me tell you, Eden has enough to go around. Eden, from one fucking bean... Um... Excuse me, what am I saying? From one seed, you can grow a tree that can feed multiple families. From one seed. And what's beautiful is that seed creates a, um, a tree, and that tree creates more fruit that have more seeds. So the way that nature has been designed, it's, it's, it's ingenious and it's infinite. It follows the golden mean. It follows the Fibonacci sequence. It's, all nature is is abundance. So with, with a handful of seeds, you can fucking repopulate Eden. And the, some of these, the way that you, the way that food could be grown here in the matrix, excuse me, not in the matrix, the matrix needs to be dissolved and transmuted. You can grow food in ways here in the Garden of Eden that can easily nourish m m twice as many people that we currently have on the planet. You see, over a population is bullshit once you realize the ingenious design of nature. Nature always has an answer. Let me tell you, Eden has enough to go around. Peace be with you.